We turn now to the FDA. It is in the hot seat on some regulatory uh, reaction to reporting medical failures in medical devices. And we have Tom Burton here this morning to tell us uh, what steps are being taken. Uh, Tom, give us sort of the background on this story in the sense that some medical devices uh, that have failed, uh, failed to be reported. Well, there's been a history for decades, really, of what wires that connect heart defibrillators to the heart. There's been a history of them fracturing or failing in various ways. And most recently, what's happened is that there was one from Medtronic in 2007 that fractured. And now, even more recently, in the last few months, there's a, there's a wire made by St. Jude Medical that has been failing in an estimated 15% of patients. Now, that failure does not necessarily at all mean that the, those patients get injured. But what is known at this point is that 20 or more patients have been killed as a result of, um, of, of the, the St. Jude wire not working properly. And I'm just curious, is there a thought that had the original failures been reported or if there had been a system in place that they alerted the other people that had been in, or doctors who had implanted these devices in patients that those the resulting 20 incidents uh, could have been prevented? It's possible they could have been prevented and almost as important it's possible that they would have been able to be put in perspective. It, it's very conceivable that there are deaths happening with other defibrillator leads that we don't know about but, but the problem now is that the FDA's surveillance system is frankly inadequate to measure, to assess um, what, the, what the nature and scope and severity of the problem is. So that kind of leaves doctors and patients with these devices implanted, leaves them in a lurch, leaves them un uncertain as to what to do. And, and Tom, I'm, I'm really shocked in reading your story about exactly how slipshod the reporting process is to, to feed this information up to the FDA. What specific steps are regulators now talking about uh, that would remedy some of, the, uh, some of the ills in the reporting process? Well, you know, they, they haven't been specific except for one thing. They're talking about assigning a specific identifier number to every device. And in theory, they're hoping that that's going to enable them to trace through billing records, like Medicare billing records, and ultimately through electronic medical records when those exist, um, what the extent of these failures is. Actually, in my view, there is a system that's in place that's currently voluntary that might have been much more successful in assessing the problem early on. What that system is, it's called MedSun. It consists of about 300 hospitals. Um, they report the numbers of implants and then what happens to the implants to the FDA. The problem is that system is voluntary and so it's just simply not very precise. Is it a step right now the FDA is taking to make that not a voluntary issue that these companies would have to report if there were any failures in these medical devices? Well, you know, again, uh, the FDA so far has been silent as to what specifically they're planning to do other than assign this unique device identifier uh, to the devices. So, so beyond that, we're still a little bit in the dark. So, Tom, what should um, patients do at this point? Or, or people, if they have one of these devices that have been implanted, should they be contacting their doctors? Or are doctors already on top of this in the sense that they are contacting their patients if they received a device from one of those companies you mentioned? Yes, the um, patients absolutely ought to be in touch with their doctors, number one. Number two, St. Jude Medical says that it has essentially an electronic monitoring system that can be put in place for everyone or most of these um, most of these leads so that the device can be checked on a daily basis and the company believes that it'll be possible to know in advance if one of these things is failing. I think there's an there's a pretty good question still as to whether that's the case. In any event, I'd say it's fair to say that, that no doctors who specialize in this field would recommend that the devices get taken out because the surgical process of taking them out is pretty dangerous. And if it ever is to happen, it should happen only at top places with um, top electrophysiologists who specialize in, in extracting leads. All right, Tom, thanks so much for joining us this morning with the story. We appreciate it.